three. Testing. One, two, three. Okay, and Twitch tells me that I'm now live. Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, today we'll be continuing our goal of uh, trying to predict lunar and solar eclipses uh, using this sort of model here that we had uh, come up with earlier. And um, a couple of things we're going to be doing here. Um, we do have here in bclib.h uh, a way of measuring how intense an eclipse is, how much, um, uh, how much of an eclipse is occurring using this um, formula that I created earlier. Um, and then one that we coded up using uh, using uh, you know vector functions and so on, and uh, the the problem of course is we we are now trying to find out sort of what the minimum and maximum eclipse is on a the surface of a given planet, uh, given that we know the center of the planet, and you know given like for example we're trying to find the maximal and minimal eclipse here actually here on the side facing the sun, uh, given that we know uh, what the eclipses look like here at in the middle of the planet where no one's watching. And so we're going to try two separate approaches here. We're actually going to try one approach. Uh, it's going to have two steps, one of which is sort of non-obvious and one of uh, which we started on earlier. And the other one, the, the obvious approach would be to start here and find the direction of maximum increase of the eclipse and the minimal increase, which will be in the, or the, you know, the maximum decrease, which will be in the opposite direction. Uh, so if we found the, you know, that the maximum increase was in this direction, we'd go in this direction, then we'd see what's the maximum increase direction now, go in that direction, so on and so forth. I'm going to cheat because I have reason to believe, and we can confirm this, that if we just took the, we started here at the origin, the middle of planet Q, looked at the direction of maximum increase, just continue until we hit the, the sphere, the edge of the, uh, you know, the, the edge of the, the sphere of the planet. And the uh, negative will be the minimum, of course, going back in this direction. Now, we could just do that, but um, one problem we're going to run into is that the minimal is probably going to, one of these two is going to be on the dark side of the planet. It's going to be on the side of the planet where S isn't visible and therefore the fact that uh, S is being eclipsed is not, a, not an issue. Um, one way to sort of maybe work around this is we can do a linear transform so that um, this, so that the line from Q to S is in the x-axis and T remain, you know, the center of T remains on the xy plane. And in that case, I think I can show, but I'm not sure, that the maximum and minimal eclipse will both necessarily occur on the planet's equator. And if we have the minimal eclipse here somewhere, we can just basically go to the first point where, um, where we, we're on the correct side of the planet. So I guess, sorry, this would be the equator. So if we have the maximum eclipse here, the minimum will be here, but we can kind of keep going until we hit the point where um, the sun is visible, and that'll be the the minimum visible eclipse. So the minimum eclipse might be here, but if you can't see it, doesn't matter, so minimum visible eclipse. So we'd started on this earlier uh, by looking at, um, I think we'd said VEC2 or 2, yeah, there we are. Um, so what we're doing here is eclipse around the world, and right now we're using this um, this function that goes through every longitude and latitude, every you know integer longitude and latitude, and computes how big the eclipse is with the idea that we're going to try to find the minimum and maximum. Obviously that is inefficient and it's also inaccurate because it could miss the minimal or maximum eclipse because it could be off by up to half a degree in either direction. Um, so what we're going to do, hello, 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 hello my friend, Bstone2019, who has a very similar name to mine, they just realized. Good to see you Bstone, how's it going? Uh, is now in chat. So Beast Stone 2019 is in chat, um, and I appreciate it. I don't know how much of this is interesting to you or to anyone else, but, but here it is. So I will proceed as, and you may comment as you will. Okay. Uh, good. Just wrapped up a stream. Oh, awesome, awesome. And I can can I assume that you did the wonderful thing of of rating my stream or which is cool and wonderful stream. B-Stone, here, I'll, I'll put it here just so um, so you can see it. B-Stone 2019, wonderful person, not a, not a Linux command, but a wonderful person uh, who also puts the 2019 at the end of their name. So that makes them an even better person. So um, so that's, that's fantastic. Um, okay. And 
So last time we talked, and by the way, Beastone, if you have anything to say, say it, and I will interrupt this otherwise worthless stream to talk to you. Um, so earlier we're going to use the uh, the C spice function 2 vec C to create a frame where S is on the x-axis and T is in the xy plane. In other words, a frame that once we we'll get a matrix that once we multiply S and T by it, they'll look even more like this. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. I, I'll take that as a compliment instead of just as sort of an instruction. So our so our diagram will look more like this, where um, we are at least the centers of Q, T, and S are coplanar and that that plane is xy, uh, the xy plane, and the qs line is, is in the x-axis. So sort of the simplest thing we can do there. And the 2 vec c, I uh, will go ahead and bring that up real quick. We, oh, we actually, at some point we actually um, brought that up. But um, find the transformation, so we're just going to copy the, the signature. Okay. And... Okay, and I think the axe definition here is going to be 1 for the x-axis, but I will double-check that. Um, is the vector defining one of the principal... Oh, okay, okay, sorry, that's the vector. So that, that's going to be... Um, that's going to be... Uh, uh, let's see, yes, S is going to be the vector that we want to become the x-axis. So not a problem. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, uh, we actually do need to compute the, the position first before we do anything with it. Um, spherical position. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, these are the positions of um. Uh, let's see. I suppose, uh, right, this converts the rectangular positions of um, s and t, s pause and t pause, into um, which we just calculate here into angular coordinates. Uh, which we don't need to do here because we're actually going to be using these as rectangular coordinates. So here we will say, and it's not S, of course, it's S pause. The position of S will become index A. Index A will be the x-axis. And I think, uh, yeah, if, I, if, if index A is 1, then AX def defines the x-axis, which is what we want. Then we have the second variable. Um, is the vector defining with x def the principal plane, so this is going to be t pause, our other vector. Um, and then index p, we want that to be the y-axis, so that's going to be 2. And then, of course, we need the output, which we will treat as an input, is the matrix of rotation. And we will um, go ahead and add it to our ever-increasing list of spice doubles. Um, and we'll just call it mat for matrix. Okay. And... So if I've done this correctly, we had now have a matrix. Um, I'm going to be brave and not even print out the matrix. We should go ahead and multiply the matrix uh, by S and T and see if it actually gives us the results we want. So there's a there's a function here that'll do that. Um, matrix. I'll look for the word matrix and it should come up. Vector transpose. No, nope, that's what we want. We want matrix times vector is what we're looking for. Uh, transpose a matrix. No. Transpose a matrix. No. Transpose matrix, determine double precision, diagonalize symmetric matrix, Euler angles to matrix, return the identity matrix, invert a matrix, which we might need to do, by the way, because if we ever want to go back from the coordinates, our new coordinates, back to J2000 coordinates, we will have to take the opposite of this matrix. Indicate whether an array is a, a matrix, is a rotation matrix. Matrix to Euler angles, how many, oh, we have 40 things. Matrix to quaternion, we have 40 matches, so we have a little bit to go. Matrix equal, matrix equal, Matrix transpose times matrix, matrix trans da, da. Uh, matrix transpose times vector, ma matrix. We're very close to matrix times vector. Matrix times matrix, matrix times matrix, matrix times vector. That's what we want. MXV. So we'll copy the signature here real quick. This should not be an issue. This should not be a big deal here. Uh, this should be pretty simple. Okay. So the uh, matrix, MXVC, the matrix is mat. The first thing we're going to convert is s pause, and the only thing we don't have is we don't have a place to put the result. So let's see. I said s temp. Um, oh yeah, s temp and t temp were the ones that moved sort of around. Um, and I think I can reuse them actually because 
I completely redefined them here. Um, I, let's see if I redefined Qtemp. Yeah, I redefined Qtemp, Stemp, and Ttemp here. So if I use them here, it's not going to break anything. Uh, so I can say this will be Stemp. And then very similarly for, you know, almost literally the same thing for T, Tpos becomes Ttemp. And now our question, of course, the thing that we're interested in is, has this matrix transformation made S on the x-axis, T on the xy-axis, as we would expect? So we'll say S, percent F, percent F, percent F, um, S temp at zero, S temp one, S temp two. Okay, we'll say the same thing for, I guess we should say S temp, just to be clear, and T temp, just to be clear. And this is going to be t temp 1, t temp 2, t temp 2 here. And now, <laughs> I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm pretty sure the way we had BC occultation set up last time, uh, it did, it printed this exactly once. Uh, well, once per, um, okay, let's not do that. Okay, once, um, once per every time uh, there was an eclipse. So this should only be called a couple of times, which which is good because that's about the um, that's how we don't want to spam ourselves here. So let's go ahead and do a make, and we'll do it to less to make sure we haven't ma made any new mistakes. Uh, we haven't, and let's just see if we. I'm pretty sure we had a pretty good definition of a uh, pretty good call here that we liked. We see occultations, and when I say we did, I mean we didn't. We see occult. Here we go. And we're not going to attempt, we're not going to put it redirected. There should be only, whoa! Aha, uh -huh, see, this, that's what happens when you break things. Um, no, we don't actually want to print um, the longitude, and the separation data at every longitude and latitude. So we won't do that. And let's remake. Let's go to BC Astro. Make pipe to, oh. Yeah, let's just do a make pipe to less. I did touch that, so it should be fine. Oh dear. Set data set, but not okay. That's fine. We we're gonna we usually would print it, but we're not printing it now. But it's only a warning. We can live with it. Okay. Still not good, but let's see what went on there. Um. Wow, well, this this is actually very nice. It actually did exactly what we wanted. Um, S temp is now exactly in the x-axis. T temp is in the xy plane. Not Obviously, it can't be on the uh, x-axis because it doesn't line up perfectly. Um, we have a bunch of other stuff being printed out here that I guess um, I didn't expect to be printed out, but let's see what's going on here. So we have it here. We don't print it. We do print this stuff, but this stuff, oh, this stuff might be, well, just let's play it safe and not print it. Um, and those are just warnings, and this is just a one-liner, so if we keep getting prints, we, sh well, let's just see if we're printing out anything else here. Not that, not that, not that. Not that. If I really wanted to, I could use a grep statement here uh, to see what we're printing out, um, but it looks like we should be okay. And if this doesn't work, I will be worried. So once again, we'll get the same warning that uh, uh, we have a, f a variable we're not using. That's okay. Okay, something's wrong here. Um, I mean, gorgeous on what we're doing with S temp and T temp. Not so gorgeous that we're getting printouts for some values. Um, so let's see. Well, you know what? I said I could use grep, and I will. And... And of course, we want, um, we don't want ones that have comments in front of it. Sprintf is actually okay. Um, oh. I think I know where that's coming from. Oh, yeah. Um, we have the special condition where, uh, if, um, if you're on the other side of the sun, in the dark side of the planet, we print the special case minus two, which of course we don't really want to be printing. Uh, but that is th that is, and again, that is just because we we're trying to find the we're trying to find the answer with brute force. Now we're hoping we can find it without. 
So now let's see if this does anything more like what we want. Does. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so now the question is how do we compute the gradient? And the nice thing here is I'm going to say, I'm going to claim, the gradient is going to point towards the equator of the sphere. In other words, it'll have no z value because both s and t don't have a z value. That's my claim. That's not a mathematical fact. So let's take a look at this. Let's go over here. Um, let's tamp all this stuff. Um, so, okay, hello, all my extra viewers have come in. Hope you're enjoying this or that you haven't died of boredom yet. So we have these two, uh, these two vectors. And now to compute the gradient, now there's a correct way of computing the gradient. We can actually, we have a formula, we have a mathematical formula, so we can take the derivative with respect to, or the partial with respect to x, y, and z, and that is our gradient. However, that's not very general, because some of our functions are going to be much harder to compute and won't have a closed form, and therefore won't have a closed gradient form. So we're going to do something a little bit, um, we're going to do something a little bit easier here, and I'll make a note to maybe functionalize this. Um, we're going to actually just look at the uh, functionalize, if I can spell. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, just look at the values of our, uh, you know, our function very close to, um, at, you know, at the origin and then very close to the origin and, and you basically use that to estimate the derivative using the definition of derivative, which for us, I mean, it's usually given as fx plus h minus fx over h as uh, h approaches zero. That's the normal definition. For us, we want to be a little bit more symmetric, so we're going to say fx minus h, uh, x plus h minus f, x minus h, so it's equally distant around the point x, divided by 2h. And there's lots of other ways of doing it. This is an equivalent definition. So that's what we're going to use. And if I remember correctly, which I, I better, um, the, the function we're calling here, oh yeah, we can just call it from here, is um, the function that tells us how much of an eclipse is occurring at a given point is um, separation data. I'm pretty sure, I mean, it looks like that's what it is because that's what we're calling. Let's make sure. Uh, yes, it is separation data. Okay. So, separation data. And I am going to have to see how we call it. Separation data is um, vector one. Okay, so that's going to be s temp s r zero. Okay, this is actually going to be um, t temp t r zero. Um, Got to be a little bit careful here. Uh, this is let's see. Yeah, this is the separation data from. So this is the separation data from the origin, from where, yeah, we're at zero, zero, zero. Um, but we really want it from a little bit away from the origin, so I'm trying to figure out a way of doing this that's not going to be too ugly. Um, let's see. The, we need to add two vectors here, and I'm trying to avoid getting even more functions going here. Um, let's see. So what we really want is s temp plus you know, 0 0.0.1, 0 .1, uh, 0, 0. And in many languages, you would be allowed to do this in C or not. So s temp is an array. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. And I don't want to go ugly like we did and do like a minus, you know, add 0 0.01 and then subtract minus point two and then add point one to get it back to where it was. That's really ugly. So let's not do that. Um, so how are we doing that here? I guess here we are, we're using uh, s temp. Uh, right. We're using s temp as the temporary vet variable and we keep changing it by adding it to s pause. So I guess using s temp here was not a great idea. Let's see if we can, um, uh, let's see. <laughs> and we'll need a, we'll need a t temp as well. 
Um, we'll, need, we'll need something similar for T. Well, I'm going to go crazy here and just call this temp. This is not ideal necessarily. So, um, so this we can just print out. Well, this is actually a double, so we can actually just print this out. Um, data from origin. And that's going to be that. That's only vaguely interesting to us. Um, and let's see. Okay. And because we're going to be computing separation data for... Um, Jesus Christ, this is going to get ugly. Okay. And I'm tempted to write a function that does this, but let's 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 sl plug plug through here. Um, yeah, this is this is not nice. Uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, this might be, this might be a little bit too ugly. What we need to do basically here is we need to look at S temp, um, you know, with both T temp and S temp reduced by like a little amount and then gained by a little amount, uh, to see how the, and then divided by twice the amount we, we shifted the delta. Um, so let's see, I think what we can do here, yeah, let's do this, um, yeah, I'm just going to give up on trying to save myself some variables. Temp P, not the city of Arizona, for temp positive, meaning the value when we move a little bit in the positive direction, temp M as we move in the, um, negative direction, and then, um, because we'll need to separate that temp diff uh, to be the difference, and finally, uh, to store the actual uh, changes, we'll need dx, dy, and dz. And that those, the last three aren't too bad. The last three are, I'm okay with. Um, so now what we need to do here is, um, right, we need to add it to temp three. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We need to add Okay, this is going to get ugly enough that I might ask somebody who does free code reviews to look at this. I mean, we can always say something like temp zero equals um, s temp zero. That just copies, but we do want to increase it by a little bit. Oh, and we, we sh we're going to go ahead and use uh, a delta just so we can adjust delta. Um, and delta is going to be the sort of distance we move away from um, we move away from the origin. Well, that's the H we're going to use in our definition of derivative. And we'll, right now I'm just going to say it's 0 0.01, um, which is going to be really tiny. It probably should be something like QR over a thousand, because it's going to depend on Q, obviously. Um, so we move a thousandth away to the surface, see what happens. So QR plus delta, and then temp 1. I'm going to probably end up rewriting this code. I'm getting too unhappy with this. Um, so what this does, and I guess we're moving delta in the positive direction, the vector becomes in the negative direction, and then I'm going to do this for t temp as well. Holy crap. Okay. Hmm. See, at this point I'm tempted to say, if, can we actually do... Um, array addition and subtraction um, can we actually pass a raw array as a raw object instead of having I, d I don't think we can I don't think they'll allow that um, but let's try it so and right now we're just gonna we're just gonna do it just to test syntax here temp data one two three SR0 is one I don't know if this is gonna make any sense but 
Uh, I'm just trying to see if this is going to be a, give me a functional error. So ideally, if I could pass data like this, where I pass the arrays in um, as curly braced arrays, uh, this would be great because then I could just I could just sort of put in what I needed without having to um, without having to create all these new arrays all over the place. I don't think that's going to allow this though. And I think we've looked at this before, and I think I've made this exact same mistake before, so this should be fun. Error expected. Whoa, show, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before T temp. A temp peak? Wait, hang on, that might not be where the error is then. Um, I might have just made a mistake here somewhere. Oh, I need a comma there. Okay, one more time. Invalid operations. Oh, jeez. QR. This is one of the, like, other pains of C, which is you, you really shouldn't divide a, I mean, it should recognize 1,000 as a floating point 1,000, but it thinks it's an integer, so it's unhappy that I'm trying to divide a, a floating point number by a, an integer. I think that's what it's unhappy about. Okay, BC occultations. Spice double, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, right, nope, different problem. Um, QR is once again a three-dimensional array. QR zero is the actual radius that we want. Um, yeah, and I don't think you can pass raw arrays like that. Um, let me see if we can do that, though. We'll, we'll take a quick look here. We'll go over here. Oh, do I have a new message here? Uh, do you need a numerical method? So this is someone trying to answer my question, and I was hoping to get a closed form formula, but let's not worry about that for right now. So, pass constant array to C function. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, let, let's see what this, uh, hopefully we can do it though. Um, void bar, you constant foo. Um, Let's see. Yeah, and I also don't think you can um, you can create an array like this using this brace notation, but I'm pretty sure you can't redefine one like this, which is just insanely weird. Um, and I'm pretty sure you're not, you're not able to redeclare arrays in the middle of everything. So let's see. Well, maybe you can actually, because we only call this. Ho oh, oh, ho! That is ugly. Um, so can we do that? I'm like 99% sure we can't, but let's try it. So instead of doing this, we'll just say, um, uh, temp equals 1, 2, 3. We want to define an array, and temp is something that we've declared to be spice double. Um, and it's a three element array, so this should work. Uh, it won't, but it should. Okay, one more time. Yep. I cannot, um, I cannot assign temp to be that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I, c I, c I can do, here's something I can do, uh, but it's not useful. Um, So this will work if I don't declare temp3 up here. Uh, if I, at the time of declaration, I can set it equal to, um, I can set it equal to whatever I want. Um, okay, warning unused variable, but that's, uh, oh, variable delta set but not used. I don't think any of these are actually gonna kill it. Unused, 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 unused. Uh, unused, Jesus Christ. But it still compiles. The zero here means it does still compile. Uh, did you do the advent of code this year? I did not do the advent of code this year. I did do it last year and the year before that. Uh, this year I didn't. Uh, you can actually still do the previous ones. I could do this year's if I wanted to retrospectively, and then the previous years and so on and so on. 
Um, it, was, it was fun. I enjoyed it when I did it last year and the year before. Uh, this year I'm trying to focus more on um, this kind of coding. That uh, this is actually in if this actually works, it'll be interesting because it'll not only predict. I mean, not accurate, super accurately. Solar and lunar eclipses on the Earth. You know, everyone knows how they go. Uh, they're very popular. But it'd be interesting because you could predict, like, you know, when will Jupiter see a transit of Venus? That's the kind of question no one really asks. It's not really important, but it's somewhat theoretically interesting. Um, so that would be the uh, that would be the interest there. Now let's see. Um, so this did compile. So this did compile. Um, but now let's see. What, yeah, let's see. So this I can do I, when I declare it. But there's two things now I can't do that would be very useful if I can find out where the frick I declared it. Wait, did I declare it over here? No. Not that stupid. Okay, hang on. I messed something up. Oh. No. Oh, here it is. Spice double temp three. No problem. Now this probably won't work even if I didn't put, you know, with, if it works with the three, I'll be impressed, actually. This won't work because uh, you can't, I don't think you can change the value, even though it's not a constant, in this manner. I get the feeling that's the, uh, that's an issue there. And unfortunately, in order to get this to work, you have to touch BC, I sort of got it, I'm maybe end up... Um, I'm maybe going to end up um, fixing BC pseudo make so that it it does um, it does force that. Okay, let's see. Ooh, spice temp set but not used. Complaining about a bunch of stuff, which is fine, but um, set unused variable unused. All of this is not a problem. Um. Here I cannot redeclare temp uh, be once I've once I've created it initially. And that is really sort of ugly. Um, so and it, this won't work either. I can't redeclare it without the three. Um, okay, I'll, I'm just going to show you that I can't do that. Uh, and then I'm going to show you one other thing you can't do, which is you can't redefine it as a spice double either. There's really no way to do this, is what is the problem is. And here, I won't let you do that. One more time. Um, yeah. So if, even if I try to do this, spice double temp three, uh, now it's going to tell me I'm, I'm trying to declare something twice. And it's not going to allow me to do that either. So uh, let's take a look here. Redefinition of temp. Yep. Just doesn't like it. Okay. One more thing I'm going to try that it actually may let me do. Um, which I don't know if C actually allows for multi-definition like this. I don't think it does, actually, to be honest. Um, so this would be a shortcut to uh, reassigning every value of T. Um... Let's see. Actually, I don't even know if it recognizes. Um, it's an interesting question, actually. Well, let's try this first, and then if this doesn't work, we'll look at the other thing to see if it even recognizes a raw array. I don't think it does, to be honest. Um, left hand upper end of common expression has no effect. Um, so apparently it doesn't like me trying to define an array like redefine an array like this. I like a vault. And that again, a lot of these things come out of, of more sophisticated languages, not necessarily better ones, but more, more complicated ones, more, you know, better syntax ones or differently syntax ones, uh, where you can do stuff like, um, where you can do stuff like multiply assigned variables. Uh, I guess the only other question I have here is, um, Uh, can I? Will
will this be recognized as um, actually will this be recognized period actually good question here mm, let's see unused variable delta is oh yeah here it is unexpected expression yep it doesn't it doesn't like this as a raw array so let's see um, let's briefly see if we can fix this but it almost sounds like they don't um, almost sounds like they really don't want you to do this so int data and okay good 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 uh, to pass constant arrays uh, let's see int data well that doesn't yeah but those are declarations um, so we want to pass raw arrays not so raw arrays not constant arrays raw arrays well <laughs> why can't okay um, the origin is historical the problem is the rule arrays decay to pointers when passed to a function is simple Copying arrays would be kind of complicated since the behavior would change. So apparently this is like a known bizarreness of C. That you cannot do this. Okay, but now that we know that, we have, we, we'll, we'll work around it. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 so we need to crea create a um, new array from S temp, which is the rotated value of S pause, that is basically almost the same vector but has a slightly higher X value um and and also a t var variable that has a slightly higher t value and then take the separation distance of those and holy moly and then also lower value of x lower value of x again take the separation data between those subtract those divide by the two delta so um not really that hard in practice but um, just a freaking pain in the ass overall. So let's see if we have uh, S pause, S temp, T temp, Q temp. Good so far. Set data. We do need. Okay, these are the positions for the for the uh, sphere coordinates. Uh, these are the sphere. It's the matrix we're creating. Everything beyond that, I think we need to we need to rethink this. Okay. Um, So maybe we should actually say um, S rotated 3, T rotated 3. So this will be S pause and T pause, but after they've been rotated by the matrix. Uh, and there's no point in doing that for Q. Q is at the origin. Uh, rotations can't change what the origin is. So let's do that. And so then we'll say uh, these are matrices. Find the matrices. Um, but instead of giving us s temp and t temp, we're going to give ourselves s rot and um, t rot. So s rot, s rot, s rot, s rot, t top, t rot. Okay. Uh, data from origin. Um, s rot, t rot, this sucker. And then we won't worry with this, and we won't worry with this, and we know this doesn't work. And now let's see if this is at least going to compile, hopefully without errors, because I got rid of a lot of the var variables I wasn't um, that I wasn't using. So let's see what this does. Okay, delta undeclared. Okay, that's not cool. Um, let's see. And I guess I'm going to try to be a little bit nicer here and actually declare variables as I need them to make it to avoid cluttering up that line. Although in most cases I've got to send the variables addresses, which means I have to uh, declare pre-declare them. Um, and I can't re-declare set data every time inside the for loop. So um, let's see. Set data set but not used, and that should be. 
I've got to fix that. Um, all right, let's see if it compiles now. Unused variable delta is set but not used. That's probably okay. Um, and that does return zero, so we do have what we want. Let's see if now we can get the results we want out of this. Good, good data from origin. Um, wherever the hell this is, the, the origin, and we have a, a total eclipse. Okay. So now... Okay, so now we have... Um, data from the origin. Now we need to basically look at the uh, the delta. We need to do the um, plus delta, minus delta. So here we can actually use the um, um, let's see uh, s temp will be the variable we can... Uh, have we defined s temp? I don't think we've defined s temp right up to this point. Okay, so this is ugly but it is tolerable. And I think I need to say for int i. This is really ugly, and we'll make a little comment. Reset, set s temp and t temp to s rot and t rot. And this is an array deep copy. We're copying the elements of the array, and it's very ugly. I'm going to make it uglier um, by putting it in one line because we're going to end up using it more than once. S rot i. T temp i equals T rot i. Okay. So, so T temp and, okay, so now we set, so these S temp and S rot are equal. Um, now, the positive X value, so this is going to be, um, we're going to, we're going to uh, let's see. Increase. Uh, uh, make viewpoint delta zero zero instead of zero zero zero, which means s temp of zero minus equals delta, and so does t temp of zero equals delta. Now we can compute the separation data for for this uh, when you've moved positive delta. So we'll say um, sep plus x. It doesn't matter what we call it. We're just declaring it right here anyway. And that's going to be separation data s temp. The radiuses don't change. T temp TR0. And now because we're moving a thousandth of the direction towards the, the full radius, we'd expect this number to be somewhat close to um, somewhat close to data from the origin. We've only moved a little bit from the origin. So we should expect a sort of a small um, sort of a small difference from the origin. Okay. And now um, now we're going to reset them again. Oh God. Uh, we might be able to do a little bit better here. Um, yeah, this is going to look enough like a for loop. So the next thing we would do is we would add delta to these two, compute that separation, and then subtract the separations divided by two delta. But I think we can do better than that. I think we can do a little bit better than that. So let's go ahead and say, if this is a different eye, um, so we'll comment this out. Uh, we're going to go through the um, three indexes, I, zero, 0, 1, and 2. Okay. And then we're going to go from, um, let's see, if j equals minus 1, j less than or equal to 1, j plus equals 2. So what we're going to do through this loop here is we're going to consider um, we're going to change all three values and we're going to uh, 
Yeah, we're going to go plus x minus x plus y minus y plus z minus z, uh, and then store the, the separation for all three of those. Then towards the very end, oh, can we do better than that, actually? Um, yeah, we might be able to do better than that, actually. So we're going to say spice double deltas. This is going to keep track of the, the deltas for the three axes. So uh, we don't need to do this. Um, minus, let's see. Um, no, we sorry, we're going to keep track of all six of them. Um, so what we want here is we want to say, uh, first we want to reset... Um, we want to reset s temp and t temp to be s rot and t rot at the beginning, then we'll just change one of them. Um, and here we need to use k because we've already used up i and j. So this just resets the value of um, of s temp and t temp to be equal to s rot. We, there's probably a more efficient way of doing this. Um, but this is not terribly bad. There's only three arrays. So we're okay there. Okay, so now we've reset k, 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 k. Um, now, uh, let's see. Got to be a little bit careful here. So now we want to set s temp's ith value um, to j times delta, and the same for t temp, of course. Um, oh, and I guess, and I guess to be consistent, this is actually minus equals. So what we're doing here is we're changing s and t, the same coordinate by either positive or negative delta. And this will give us a value of separation data that we can put into the deltas array. And once we've done all of this, we can use the deltas array to determine, um, to determine the gradient. So let's see here. And now the clever bit is going to be uh, how to figure out um, Nope, I'm just going to be really, really, really nasty here. So we're just going to be basically saying, um, we're just going to count because we need every time, uh, let's see, so post increment. So this says delta zero equals whatever I'm about to say here. Then it becomes one, two, three, four, five, uh, and five should end at five. The plus plus means we use the value first, so it'll be zero first, then we post increment. So deltas count plus plus equals separation data. Actually, I think we can just quote it from here. And um, if I've done this correctly, I will be freaking amazed. And let's see if we want to um, comment a little bit here. Reset s temp and t temp to s rot and t rot. And here. Um, change s temp and t temp to view from delta away from origin in ith axis. So 0 for x, y, z. 0 is x, 1 is y, z is 2. So this is going to give us that, that, and um, right, and that makes the viewpoint uh, you know, delta away in a cardinal direction. So now, and I will tell you the odds of this being anywhere near correct are very low. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this will be deltas. Deltas, two, deltas, three. Maybe I should have made a loop here. And it is only up to five. Okay, I doubt this will even compile, but if it does, I doubt it will run. Let's see what this does. BC occultations. Uh, subscripted vari va variable is neither array, nor pointer, nor vector. 
Oops, I said Delta 4, didn't I? I meant to say Delta Z 4. So that was just a very minor error there. All right, once more. Um, set data set but not used. Not not a fatal error. Okay. All right, so deltas, that actually looks uh, pretty good there. These values are all very close to being the same, which we expect. Um, and, and by the way, you'll notice that I predicted earlier that the z value wouldn't change. Uh, that the, only the, the gradient is only in the x and y direction. And it appears I'm correct, and I'm not surprised by that, because we have rotated everything so that s and t are in the xy plane. Okay. I'm not going to count on that. Though. I'm still going to go ahead and compute uh, dx, dy, dz. I'm not going to pretend like uh, I know for a fact they're going to be zero. So spice double dx equals um, deltas one minus delta zero. The first two are going to be for x. And then we're going to divide by, I guess technically this could be an array. Um, um, do I care? I probably do not care for right now. Um, over two times delta. Notice that this is delta's the array, delta the small value. And then for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just do this. Deltas. This is going to be three and two. And this is going to be five and four. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and uh, BC get this before I forget. And you can't see what I'm doing. But that's okay. It's nothing terrible. Well, it is, but that's aside from the work we're doing here. So the get stuff is not the terrible part. I am uh, doing other terrible stuff here, but uh, that's different. Okay, so uh, now we just want the three values of dx, dy, dz. And we're going to see something really clever here, uh, if I can get it working. Okay, so now what we're going to ask the question is, what is, this is essentially the gradient. It is the, oh, oh here we go, we have another message. I'm going to take off, talk to you later. Thank you very much, Beastone2019. Really appreciate your visiting, and I will talk to you later. And uh, thank you. So we've, we've got, um, so this is going to be the gradient. This is going to be the change in x the delta of x at the, at the origin, delta of y, delta of z, as derivatives. And again, expect dz to be zero. Not a huge deal. Um, okay, that did make correctly. Okay, interesting. So we have the deltas are uh, minus 0 0.03, minus 0 0.0296. And as I expected, zero. So what's exciting about this is that the, um, well, it's almost exactly pointing in the y direction, but it does have a little bit of an x component here. And I think if we did it for um, multiple eclipses, um, wow, actually, yeah. delta's almost, this actually might be because the y direction is where we are, um, hmm. That's actually kind of strange. I would expect the x direction to have most of the, the delta, but it doesn't. Um, and the claim now is if we take the arctangent of this, um, y over x, uh, it'll give us the uh, the la it'll give us the longitude in, in our in our weird sort of world, um, where the uh, where the uh, where either the maximum or minimum eclipse occurs. Um, Although I guess in our case we can just take this variable, extend it to length one, and then that'll touch necessarily. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, th th that'll necessarily um, that'll necessarily make it uh, touch the sphere, and wherever that point is on the sphere, um, we can measure the. Uh, hang on one second, though. Got to be careful. Let's see, so we've done this, we've, um, okay, 
we've created the rotated angles. We've looked at the separation data. Uh, from these angles. Um, oh yeah, I guess we can do that because uh, we've rotated the, the Q sphere itself, but that doesn't matter. So we're now in we're now in a um, we're now in an or we're in a system now where S rot and T rot we can just continue to use them as are. We haven't changed their separation data any, we've just rotated them in a rigid rotation. So now all we have to do is extend this to the um, uh, to the sphere, at, and uh, let's see what we can do there. So we um, so we're going to basically look at the separation data at um, you know we're going to extend the, the gradient to the sphere and look at the separation data there, and we can actually measure the gradient from there as well. And and theory, the gradient at that point should go straight outwards, which means there's nothing on you can let, there's nothing you can do on the surface to increase or decrease the uh, the separation data. Uh, let's see if we can do all of this. Um, and can I overuse? Okay, I've already used delta for that. So um, I guess I can call it the uh, gradient. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, there's more than one way to do it. I'm, I'm trying to create a vector that's of length one, but that points in the same direction as dx, dy, dz. Um, and one way to do it is to say, the norm, the norm of the derivatives, is the square root of dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared, which it is. Um, and then say spice double, and technically this is the gradient, the normalized gradient, so we call it g norm. And here, because we're just declaring it, we can actually say um, dx over d norm, dy over d norm, dz over d norm. And that should be, and I say that in a very, that should be the vector that um, that touches the sphere and is in the same direction as the gradient. Um, so the gradient and the gradient normalized to length 1. And let's see what that does. G norm. Gee, norm. Hey, it's norm. That was totally incorrect. Norm. Okay, so we have the uh, gradient normal. So this should be a vector of length 1 that points in the same direction as the gradient. Let's go ahead and do this. And then... God willing, or whatever... Uh, excess elements in... Z oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, that is... I cannot do that. Um, because this is an array of three elements. Oops, that's one I meant to do either. Um, BCL, let's see. Oh. The eternal problem of whether we're using star star or arrow to mean exponentiation. Let's do that. And, ooh, still doesn't like it. Oh my god. Okay. I think I could use POW for power, but I'm just gonna go the old-fashioned way and just multiply it by itself. Which I think is actually faster, so... Come see, come saw. Okay, so it's still complaining, but it did compile. Data from origin, G norm is going to be that. And of course, the negative of G norm is going to be the negative of that. All right, so the question we're going to ask now is, um, 
what does the separation look like if you're at that point, which is on the sphere now. That is the point on the sphere. Uh, so that's going to be the data from that point. And again, it's going to be sort of ugly to get. Um, we can use STemp. Um, yeah, so we, we can reset uh, STemp once again to be SROT and TROT. And this time, well, actually, I think we're going to do a little bit better than that. So S temp is going to be S rod K, but we want to subtract off um, G norm of K. So let's go ahead and do this. So it's rot, and we, we shift it by the position that we were looking at. Uh, the normalization of... Okay, so now we're on the surface, and there's a problem here, isn't there? Um, yep. Uh, G norm has a length of 1 we actually want it to have a length of QR w because we want it to be on the surface of Q. So this is actually, well, let's see. I think we can just do this. Um, the gradient and the length normalized to QR. So QR, um, nope, 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 that's going to divide by too much. Um, Actually, we should probably leave d norm to that value, and then just multiply by qr. I mean, we could have divided d norm by qr and would to get the same effect, but I don't think that's that's what we want to do. Okay. Hmm. Well, it doesn't. Oh wow! Whoa! 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 Invalid operate to binary star? Yeah, spice. Oh, Jesus freaking Christ. Every time. Every time I forget that QR is a uh, is a, an array. So it's QR0 that we're multiplying by. Not QR. All right. Okay. Didn't complain but it did run okay data from origin g norm there we go so g norm now touches um now touches the surface of q in this case our moon and now so we take the uh, what's interesting here is because we know that s rot only has an x component and t rot only has a x and y component um, actually, that might still be interesting. Never mind. Okay, so this uh, this changes our viewpoint to G norm, this point on the surface that we've got by following the gradient, and now we're going to look at S and T from that point. And um, I guess it's vaguely interesting to know what they would be, but I don't care about that. I what I care about is the um, um. It's going to be tricky. I can actually now declare SEP. Uh, instead of declaring it up here, I can declare it now and then I continue to use it later on. And I guess it's SEP data that I want to declare here, but that same thing. Uh, equals. And this is going to be separation data. And we'll say what it's of in just a second here. equal separation data of S temp, S R zero, T temp, T zero. And let's see. There's no guarantee this is maximal or minimal. Um, but let's see. Let's go ahead and do all this printing here at the end. Um, G norm. Uh, Okay. Oh, I guess I didn't even have to declare it there. And um, grad point, the gradient point, the point we get by fault. Nope, 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 nope. I want to do a separate printout for this. Data from grad put. put. And yeah. 
at some point we are actually going to want to um, we're going to want to maybe assign these variables but for right now we can just compute them and print up gnorm here You see, I'll take. Whoa, 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 whoa. What am I doing here? Did I um, accidentally leave off a comma when I removed that? No, I didn't. Okay. Eclipse around the world, error line at 800. Oh, did I remove something without removing the whole. Okay. Separation data, this sucker, and I think I need another print here. Here, close off the, uh, the the printf. And no, still unhappy. Sep data undeclared. Okay, yeah, that's that's why I needed to declare it. So we'll just go up here and declare it again in this hideous mess. And done. Okay. Data from gradient point. Okay. Good. It's quite a bit less. And it's quite a bit less here, too. And then, so this is apparently we're pointing to the minimal eclipse here, which means I've got my directions backwards somehow. Um, let's also go ahead and do it from the maximal. Let's go ahead and do it from the negative gradient where that hits on that side. And if we're lucky, we should see, we should have a, um, well, actually, hang on, red point. Um, we would like to measure the gradient from there. I don't know if this is a minimum. This is a, um, this is a value uh, that is, you know, lower or actually higher than the one at the origin. But I don't know if it's the maximum possible value. But let's do the other important thing here, which is, oops say oops as much as possible. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do the um, the value from the negative of that. The uh, the um, okay. So here we'd be a little bit careful. Um, that's all fine. So now we're going to change it to the other. We're going to change s temp to be the other side of uh, you know it'll be the negative of the g norm, which means it'll be. Oh. No? That should be fine. Okay, so we'll do it this way. Now, because we've changed it, we'll get a different answer here, so we've got to be a little bit careful. Uh, we can't do the printf's all at once now because we have changed the value of s temp and t temp, and, and now we're computing it separately. So this is the data from, like, the flip of the grad point. Okay. Data from origin, g norm, data from negative grad point, minus 2.2. So this is looking good in the sense that um, from the, well, it is actually correct. To, to the grad point, we have the greatest increase, uh, which is you know, our decrease in the eclipse. And from the negative grad point, we have the, the sort of uh, what we're hoping is a minimum value. Um, we can now, in theory, look at the gradient from these two points. And we would expect it uh, to go outwards uh, from the from the sphere, meaning you can't remain on the sphere and change this value. You would have to become further away from the sphere. If that's true, we've pretty much found our minimum and maximum uh, eclipse variables. Um, if it is not true, that means we will have to maybe do a little bit more work to find out exactly where the, the minimum and maximum is. Um, another way of doing that is to convert this, uh, this these points into a uh, spherical coordinates um, and then you know do a l change theta and phi a little bit to see if we're getting anything do a do a theta phi gradient from there uh, which would actually be interesting um, but let's see if we can just do what we want to which is the gradient okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and BC g I think I just did but let me double check I'm gonna go ahead and push this uh, to get now, earlier I said we could create a function that computes the gradient. 
um, which is a three, which is a very, uh, which is a three array uh, uh, variable. Um, and we can't. I don't think C Spice actually has one. I was looking for one earlier from C Spice, um, and they either don't have it or they call it something else. They don't call it the grad derivative, maybe. Um, oh, actually, you know what? They may call it a uh, derivative of a function. DFX, okay. DFX over DX less than zero. First derivative of a function. That's okay. Let me see if they use the word partial derivative, which is what we will know. They do not. Okay, derivative of a function. We're looking for the, uh, deriv the approximated derivative of a function that takes, um, let's see, the actually in our case it's going to be weird because it's going to take um, a vector, a uh, constant, like the vector being the position, um, the constant being the radius, an other vector and another constant, and it's going to return um, three values, the partial of f, f, partial of f with respect to x, y, and z. I don't even know, if, I don't think they have something like that, but let's see. Derivatives of a Chebyshev expansion, de derivative of a cylinder geodetic with respect to rectangular, la latitudinal, I should figure out what some of these are. Planetographic, da, 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 da. I don't think they're going to give us the derivative of a multivariable function. Uh, this is kind of a fun thing to write, though. Um, and it's occurring to me that maybe uh, we don't need to write it because this is so specific time derivative um, Lagrange polynomial with interpretation quaternions no I don't think so yeah it, it just occurred to me though we could because we're going to compute it anyway um, in separation data we could actually write a function just for separation data um, because separation data is a very specific looking function. Mm, let's see, spice double, spice double, okay. It's very nice, and we could write the derivative for this, um, I think, fairly easily. Um, you give it the same things, and this time it just basically tweaks S and T each time, uh, takes the separation data, and, um, and returns the variable. We probably do want to send it uh, a delta value as well. Uh, because we d we don't necessarily want to fix the delta, um, so let's do that. It's, it's really cool if you have to send a function another function. It it you can do all sorts of really cool things with it, but unfortunately I don't think we'll need that. So um, um, let's see. So uh, you're given two variables. We're at the origin. So this is going to be a very specific thing that is basically the derivative of separation data as viewed from the origin. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's get down and dirty with this. And let's see. So it's given the same thing but it returns something very different. Okay, given a light generates three other radius returns the deriv the gradient Oh, actually hang on. Mm, gradient of okay, so we want the gradient um, what do we want out of this actually? We want the, um, yeah, unfortunately I think we want more than just the gradient. We, we actually want the gradient at a given point. Um, so this is going to be more difficult. We actually need to give it a, the object Q and QR because we need to take the, uh, we need to take the uh, gradient extend it out to the surface and then compute the changes once we're on the surface uh, compute the gradient from there 
so this is actually pretty ugly. Um, let's see, so the gradient of um, this at a given um, actually no, we could actually just, we could make our new origin be the surface point and then just take the gradient from zero uh, using delta. And let's see if that's what, let me see, that's, I think that's what we're actually, uh, we're doing here. When we, when we change, when we do this, we basically change S temp, T temp to be a point on the surface and that's our new origin. Um, I mean the origin now becomes a point on the surface because now the vectors are at different positions. So I think that, that we're okay there. So let's see, a given a light radius of S this R radius of T delta as a value to estimate the derivative returns the gradient partials of uh, returns the gradient of separation data uh, as a three element vector which is what it is. Okay, so now we're going to be a little bit careful here because we cannot, re because we're returning more than one thing, we can no longer be, we can't, we can no longer um, return the spice double, which would be nice, but we can't. Okay, void separation data derv, and it's going to take the same Okay, so it's going to take spice doubles S3, that's fine. Spice double SR, spice double T3. And there's a temptation, by the way, to just put this into separation data. Um, hmm. Nah. Um, T3, spice double TR, um, spice double delta. And then the problem, of course, is we need, and that is not spice double comma, it's spice double t3. Spice double, delta, and now we need the return vector, so spice double uh, result three. So we do need to have something passed in as sort of our special case there. Uh, that's the ugly part of not being able to return a single value. Okay, um, so we're basically gonna follow the same, uh, the same progress, we, the same procedure we used here um, to compute the, 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 ra the gradient in a much more difficult way, I mean in a much more specific way, and we did that by basically, yeah, by basically uh, computing this, um, this array of differences in the positive and negative x uh, the direction, uh, and then, um, and then doing the count. So let's see, so we have to create variable Spice double. Oh, we don't need to create result given that. Um, although I wonder if we can use result. No, we can't. Let's not be silly. Delta's six. And then we basically just do this. I mean, I'm I'm going to double check it off, of course. Um, okay. Um, one to so into case by and of course we don't have an s rot. An s rot needs to be our um, Let's see. Yeah, we basically need to set S temp equal to um, Yeah, that's going to be the position of S. Position of T. Oh, do we actually need the um, We don't need spice double. T we don't need the radiuses. We just need the positions. because, um, nope, I'm wrong, we do need the positions, sorry, we do need the radiuses, because we're sending them on to, um, we have to send them on to, uh, on to separation data itself, which doesn't know them. Okay, so we do need that. All right, so we're gonna say here is we're gonna set, um, S temp and T temp, which I probably need to define, um, to T and S, to the, to the variables we're given, and then we're going to tweak them slightly. So I probably need to do spice double deltas, S temp, 3, T temp, 3. 
and okay reset change s temp to view uh, from delta so j is fine delta is fine we're sending de delta which is okay um, and then we fill in the deltas array by taking separation data uh, s temp sr0 okay good um, And let me see, why are we sending a, um, do we actually send a three element array to, um, I don't think we do. In fact, I think when we do separation data, we send it a, a just a regular double for once. We don't send it all three radiuses because it wouldn't need those. Yeah, that is just, so this time we can actually really just say SR and TR. We don't need to, uh, we're not given all three radiuses, just the one that we need. Okay. Separation, and then we have, um, and now we need to say, well, you know what, this time we can actually get away with this. Um, uh, maybe we can't actually, hang on. Okay, so now we're not going to return anything, but we need to set the value of results. So result zero is the dx value. Um, oh no, we want to go ahead and make this the norm. So let's go ahead and um, yeah, I guess I guess we shouldn't be stingy with variables. So this is this, this is this, and then and then. The D norm is that, and then we want QR, not QR zero, but just QR in this case. Um, and here I think we can actually just set this. So, um, and over delta two equals delta two. And again, we could be, be a little bit more efficient with this because we could put a loop for these. And by doing that, we could also put a loop for these. So here I'm gonna just say QR times um, dx over norm, and then, not, sorry, not g norm, the result. The result is going to be that here, this result is going to be that there, and that result 2 is going to be this, and then because it's a, it's a void function, we don't need to return anything. Okay. So now if this works, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. The, the, so this says basically get those vectors, change the position, compute the separation data, compute the difference when you move the separation data, and return the, and you know, quote unquote, return the result. Okay, now we can, we can, if this works, we can use this and, and it, here from Eclipse Around the World and just just use that function instead of having to do our our calculations like we do here for all six deltas. So um, in theory, be really really careful how I do because I want to keep both values around for right now. So let's do this from here. Uh, after the rotation, um, delta equals q over a thousand. So I think from right here we can call it. And we need to use an array somewhere, but I think we're okay with that. Um, so we're going to say separation data derv um, s route, that's the thing we want you add like a little tiny bit to. Um, SR0 is our radius. T rot tr0 is our radius, delta is going to be whatever we have delta here, and we need something to hold the result in, and I think I think we can use oh, I don't really want to use s temp though I mean, it, it should be fine, because the, the definition here is private, but um, I think we're just going to create a temp3 for this and then okay 
And then here, um, and now if this works, we should be in good shape. Uh, let's see. Implicit declaration of separation data derv. Uh, no, that's not an implicit direct declaration at all. Unless, because we're doing it this way, I have to mention separation data derv first. Uh, or I'm giving the wrong number of arguments. One, two, three, four, physics. One, two, three, four, okay. Huh. All right, well, I can move this function below the other one. I'm not too worried about that. So we'll start here. And we will need to fix that just a sec here, but that we can do that. Mm. Boy. Okay, so we're going to move this. down to here. Okay. Let's see if that helps. Plus declaration of sep or oh, am I spelling it wrong? Um sep data sep but not used. Count under okay, yes, 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 yes. Maybe that's why it didn't let me define separation data derv. Sep oh, I misspelled separation. I feel so bad. Separation data derv. Um, and I do need to define count. Well, before I use it, maybe. And that's going to be just spice int count. All right, let's see if those two things helped. Separation data uh, derv. Mm -hmm. Okay, previous declaration was here. Am I doing something stupid? I mean, yes, but to the um did I actually move it to the wrong place? No, no, that's fine. I moved Eclipse around the world to below separation data derv. So I should be able to call it now because it's been defined. Now, why does it think I'm trying to define it as a different type? Well, let's figure this out. Okay, now I noticed that I am... Okay, so I think the function I moved to the end was the wrong function. No? So why, where the hell am I using it? Do I have Eclipse around the world defined twice now because they did a copy instead of a... Yep, I'm a moron, that's why. Alright, hang on. Let me make sure. So here we're on line 906. Here we're on line 725. So basically, yeah, 893, 725. So yep, I basically... Uh, for I basically forgot to cut and paste. I did a copy and paste. So I have two copies of a function that uh, obviously um, C doesn't like. So now, let's see if we're down to one definition of the function. QR, come on. Oh, it doesn't like it. Um, norm undeclared. Yeah, of course it is. Um... Wait. 
How about I do it in the other one then? Oh, it is deed norm. Okay. One more time. All everybody. All together now. Nope, still didn't work. Uh result zero QR undeclared. Oh crap. Okay, and that one we actually do need to pass into separation data. Um Uh, radius of S, another object T, delta as a value to estimate the derivative. I mean, we could return the gradient without multiplying it by QR. Um, but no, okay. radius of Q as QR, gradient of separation of length QR. So let's let's go ahead and do that. And I don't know why I'm inconsistent about not crank putting all the arguments on one line. Uh, TR, QR... Oh, no, I'm sorry, we should do... that comes after. Delta and then result is where you store the result. <laughs> okay, and if that is correct, that should be the vector that points, um, that should be the vector that points to the surface at the maximum increase, hopefully. So one more time. Ooh, spice is... Okay, I will, you know what? I'm going to be a nice guy. I'm going to actually define it to equal to zero, just like I did up here. Because you deserve that. Not you, the viewer, you, the program. Sep data, I think we can live with that. Okay. SDD and GNORM are the same. I'm going to push this and then trim down um, a lot of the code from um, a lot of the code from Eclipse Around the World that is now redundant. But I am going to save it in Git because, let's face it, I'm stupid. Okay, so void Eclipse. Okay, here we go. Two vec. So this is still important. We find the uh, the um, rotation that makes these both, you know, in the xy plane. And all of this is now. All of this is now actually um, yeah. Well, we actually still want this. Just gives us the point on the surface. We would still like to. Um, we would still like to actually use the uh, use the. Uh, once we get it back, we want to actually see what the values are as measured from that point on the surface. Um, So if this is correct, I'll be pretty impressed. So we found the, the gradient and touched it to the surface. We've taken the center point and moved it, which means we've taken the vectors and changed them in the opposite direction to reflect the move. And then we are going to um, see what the values are uh, at both points. So let's see separation data there. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see what this does. Um, yeah, I can't print out genome because it doesn't exist anymore. That's probably a good idea. I can print out, however, um, temp, which is the replacement for genome. Um, and there we are. 
and this looks very similar to what we saw before. Uh, the data from the, um, yeah, and it decreases as you go to the grad point, which we want, and increases as you go to the negative grad point, as we want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and BC get this, even though we just made a minor change here. And then, um, now, what we want to do is look at the gradient. Um, we want to look at the gradient as measured from the surface point that we're at, which I think we can do. And the surface point is here, uh, and this is the negative surface point, uh, which is actually should serve us just as well. So we can now do separation data derv uh, s temp, still sr0, uh, t temp, still tr0, qr0 is the same, delta is the same, and we might as well put the result in temp and then just um, SDD at grad, at negative grad point. And my prediction is this will be in the same general direction as grad point. In other words, this is going to be, the, the gradient is going to be pushing outwards from the planet, which means if you remain on the surface of the planet, you can't get an increase or a decrease. The derivative, the flat derivative is zero. Um, Let's find out. Ooh. Oh. Left hand operation. Yes, did I, I put in brackets. Aren't I clever? No. Um, let's try that again. Yeah, that's fine. We just have an unused variable, which is fine. Um... Interesting. So the SDD at the negative grad point is not quite pointing in the same direction as as the grad point itself. So that data from K. Okay. In fact, in both cases, it looks like it's no. There's no real connection here between these numbers. It's a little bit bigger. Um, so that suggests that if we were to take that point, um, we could go a little bit more in the negative x direction and um, and remain on the surface of the sphere, and um, still get a value that is uh, lower. Uh, so in other words, we don't we didn't quite nail it quite right. Although, um, that's a very small value. Uh, I mean, if we were to, I'm tempted to dismiss it as being a um, an artificially small value. Well, actually, hang on. This number changed as well, but by a very small amount. So y these are not in the same direction, unfortunately. In fact, I think this is quite a bit more in the x direction than I wanted to be. Okay. Um. So not quite what we want there. Um, apparently we have not hit a maximum point there. Um, now what we could do is we could restore the printouts of the everything and basically l check to see if um, if the maximum and minimum value fall where we expect them to fall. Um, because we can convert this vector in back to spherical coordinates. That's not a problem. Um, in fact, it is very nearly. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. I mean, yeah, it's the radius times. Uh, this is the radius is going to be qr, obviously. Um, very close to being minus minus ninety degrees of longitude. Um, so let's go ahead and restore this um, and only the separation data. Okay. So this is saying that the um, data from the gradient point, the worst we can do is negative 2.20. And 
it presumably occurs when the, the longitude, not the latitude, the longitude is minus 90. But let's actually see if we can get to um, minus 2.20, and the highest we should be able to get to is minus 1.18. Uh, so let me go ahead and be just sort of echo these numbers over here, and hopefully it doesn't take that minus 1 as a, an option. There we go. And let's just see how this works out. 2.7, oh, 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 we had the bigger numbers there. And I think we might have to do a sort here on the uh, third column. Um, yeah, well, we don't have to, but I want to. So there. Um, and because this now has two pieces of data in it, we're going to have to do this. Um, let's take a look. So the smallest value we come up with is minus 2.208. 413, which is very close to this value, which is good. Um, so I'm kind of wondering where this point is now, actually. Because um, I didn't think it was going to be there. Mm. I'm suspicious now. Because I thought this was more like minus 90. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and feed this to Mathix. Um, if we can find it. And we do want to make it sort of uh, take my lib in there, because I, th I think that's how we define, um, that's where I define um, spherical to, X to XYZ. Although in this case it's XYZ to spherical. And just take your time, yeah, not a problem. XYZ to spherical. And the negative grad point is this is x. I'm going to be surprised. I could be wrong. I'm going to be surprised though. This does not look like it's going to be very. Um, um, and I will go ahead and divide this by degree. Yeah, minus ninety point nine two comma zero five. Not this, but. Now I'm wondering if I'm doing my uh, separation data computation incorrectly. Oh, I might be. Hang on. Um, Q temp. And oh, 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 oh. Um, that was some weird sounds there for you. I think we're now using SROT. I think we. Um, we only compute s temp, uh, rather we only compute s pause once, and then we only use s rot from there. So this is completely wrong. So let's go ahead and fix that, because um, now we're going to start with um, s rot as our center, and all of our coordinates here are now in terms of um, s rot, not in terms of s pause. So s t rot, the new position, and then. Um, Yes, I think that is correct. Nice, zero errors. Okay, so we're still saying that the negative gradient point is um, actually let's not sort it first, so we have what we what we want. Okay, so we're still saying we. Okay, so we're still saying that no, we're not going to do that. Um, so that's still the, those are still the uh, the max and minimum values. Uh, minus one, two, two, minus two, 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 and we are saying that the uh, grad point is uh, this sucker. Okay. Which is minus ninety comma zero. Okay. 
So now we're going to try to do this uh, sorted by K3. And this tells us that the lowest value is minus 2.14. Um, not 2.20, which seems weird. And the maximum value here, which we expect to be minus 1.18, Um, well, the maximum value is really close to what we expect, and it's right where we kind of want it. Um, so the minimum value, though, okay, I think I know, what, I think I know what's going on, actually. The minimum value would have occurred, and let's go ahead and fix this. The minimum value would have occurred in this little, um, if, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the minimum value would have occurred on the dark side of the planet. But let's go ahead and get that for right now. Okay. Okay. Yes, the minimum value would have occurred at what I'm calling um, plus 90, comma, 0. This is fun. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, plus 90 minus 0, and, well, they're saying plus 89. Um, point two two eight oh eight six. Oh, that's very good. That's very close, actually. Um, the position I'm giving it at is kind of, um, of weird. And I did say I have to minus 90, didn't I? Minus 90, 0, and then 1737.4. This number is, is wrong because we're multiplying it by a rate, you know, degree, but that's, it's a, it's a length, not a degree. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Um, so that is... Negative, negative, negative. <laughs> that is uh, strange. Okay, but we are getting the correct number for the sort of the um, the maximum gradient, and so the question becomes if um, okay. Hmm. A little bit perplexing. Oh, I know what's wrong. Um, yeah, this should now be Q temp S rot, not Q temp S pause, because once again, we're not using the S pause anymore. In fact, let's make sure that we don't have, th that's fine, because we're not using that. That's also fine. That we've commented out explicitly. And now let's make T pause doesn't show up anywhere. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. There, 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 commented commented. Okay, good. So yeah, I think maybe we can get rid of all the points that are on the dark side, which I was not sort of seeing there because we had changed S pause. So now let's just do a less here. Um, and now let's go ahead and do it with a sort. Interesting. Yeah, the surface touch occurs at um, what appears to be minus 90 degrees, unless I've gotten something very seriously wrong. I might have flipped my coordinates somehow, but uh, um, but the value is... I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty close to what we com uh, computed, or as they say in, in, in English, computed. Um, minus 2.20846 for two six eight four oh this goes up a little bit higher than that though doesn't it, it goes to two three two and then let's see how we do on the other side and we go up as high as minus one oh one oh four five this says we can get up to one oh four oh so I'm not too concerned here um, the S rot is this the T rot is that that's all fantastic um, 
So it looks to me uh, like we're pretty close here. We There's a slight issue going on here. Um, but, and I and we might have something, some variables like messed up somehow, uh, like backwards or something. Um, get it from where? So let's see what the positive SDD is actually. Um, yeah, SDD at grad point is this sucker, which is interesting because it's not the exact opposite of this. So let's go ahead and put that into Mathix. Jumping around a little bit too much. Yeah, so let's just see what this is. This is the um, this is the point where the gradient has the greatest increase, and it tells us that it is going to be at um, minus ninety, but it's actually like eighty nine. Uh, so that's kind of weird. Okay, um, I think we can get this mostly figured out. Uh, I have now been streaming for, which means I'm about to stop, by the way. I have now been streaming for 1 hour 50 minutes, 51 minutes. Uh, thank you for watching the stream, and good night.